Our next guest is speaking out for the first time on camera regarding a lawsuit she filed against Nicki Minaj and her husband, Kenneth Petty, a lawsuit accusing them of harassment and intimidation, among other charges. We believe that all women's voices have the right to be heard, which is why we invited her to come here today. Please welcome Jennifer Huff and her lawyer, Tyrone Blackburn. Welcome, guys. Yeah, welcome to the show, Jennifer and Tyrone. I think Jennifer, I know this is not an easy thing for you to do, so we're going to take our time. Um, after being silent for so long, why are you here speaking up today? I'm tired of being afraid. I feel like um, the actions that were that were taken um, in regards to this whole situation have put me in a different type of fear at my age now and it was it was wrong and I don't want to be afraid anymore so the only way not to be afraid is to can you is to continue to speak up let's take it back to the beginning yeah. what was your first interaction with Kenneth Petty it was September 16th of 94 it was a Friday morning I was on my way to school high school um, I seen him at a bus stop I didn't think anything of, of it other than there goes Kenny across the street. And he asked me where I was going. I said I was going to school. I asked him where he was going. He said he was going to school too. I might have said something like, yeah, right. And I turned, I turned away from him to look for, um, we had dollar vans mm -hmm. back then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for the bus or the dollar van. And before you know it, he was grabbing a hold of my jacket. Jennifer, what happened after he grabbed you? I felt something in my back. So I just assumed there was, I assumed there was a gun. Okay. And I started walking and I'm pleading with him the whole way. I'm, I'm trying to understand what does he want. And we get in front of this house. It might have been maybe the second or third house from the corner. And he kind of reaches behind me with his foot to push the door open. And he pushes me up the steps. We walk up the steps. I'm, now I'm crying because now I'm, in, uh, I'm inside. We walk up the steps and I'm continuously pleading with him. I'm, I'm asking him like, what do you want? Like, if you just want me to chill here with you, I will. Um, and then he said he, I knew what he wanted. He pushed me down on the bed. We wrestled for my clothes. Because all, all I could do was hold my, hold my pants like this as tight as I can. I don't know why it didn't dawn on me to, to like really fight. I just, I just held on to my pants and he'd hold my arms down and he squeezed his, the sides of my stomach so hard. And so I'd let go and as soon as I let go, he'd grab my pants. It was like a tug of war after a while. I just got tired and I just, Oh, maybe if, if you hurry up, you know, I could just hurry up and leave. After he got off top of me, he stood in the mirror and he beat his chest. And he said, I'm the man, I'm the, I'm the man. And so I'm asking him, please let me go. I won't tell nobody. And he just was into the mirror. He just, into himself. And he went to light a, a cigarette. And I thought maybe, like, you know, I'd seen a roll of toilet paper on the, on the dresser. And I thought maybe if I liked a cigarette, I could get the match to set the toilet paper on fire. And it went out. I squirted his contact lens cleaner in his face and he was like thank you for wiping my face and he just 
touched the water, and at that time, I just seen this big plastic bottle, almost like the bleach mm. bottle, sorry, and I just took it and, and swung it at him with all my might, and when he went to duck, I pushed him, and he fell in between the beds, and I just ran, and I just, I just kept running, and just kept running, and before I knew it, I was in front of my school, and security guard was asking me, like, like, where have you been, Jennifer? You're late. And I told them, and they called the police. And the police came, and they put me in a, in a van. And they asked me if I can show him, show them the location of where this happened. I did. And I watched them bring him out in handcuffs. And then they took me to the hospital. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Now, Kenneth was arrested. But his family came and claimed that the two of you were in a relationship. Is any of that true? No. We were never in a relationship, ever. We never had no type of romantic anything. We never talked on the phone. We never hung out together. We, I just knew him from the neighborhood. At what point during the trial, it was reported that you tried to recant your accusations? What happened? Instead of me going home after that happened because I ran to school, I wasn't able to involve family members of what happened. The police had gotten involved right away, so they were pretty upset about the threats that, you know, I better drop the charges. So the lady who raised me, she was much older. And to prevent fear from that house, I was forced to go up to the courthouse on his court date. I wasn't supposed to be there. They had me hiding on the steps. They, meaning my family, had me on the stairwell um, waiting for his court to come up. And it just so happened that the district attorney took the steps that day. And she seen me and she asked me, what was, Jennifer, what are you doing here? And because my back was to my family, I was able to tell her that they were trying to force me to drop the charges. So when it came time for court, I believe the judge might have asked a question. And I, I stood up in court, and I just blurted out, I want to drop the charges. Okay. I, I never said it didn't happen. I just said, I want to drop the charges. And the judge said, take it to the DA. And they told me to leave. You know, like they, the district attorney told me I had no, nothing to worry about. And I went home. And shortly after that, I left the state of New York. Now, Jennifer, I'm going to read because I don't want to make a mistake because this no. is an important story. Um, though Kenneth Petty first denied the rape charges, he was charged with first degree rape, subsequently pleaded guilty to attempted rape, and spent over four years in prison, according to the inmate records. Did you feel that justice was served? I, I don't think I thought about justice, per se, because I was still blaming myself. Okay. I thought it was something that I did or didn't do. So I don't, I don't think I thought about if I got justice, I didn't. I just knew he did what he did, and he went to jail, and I, I had to leave my family. I had to leave my home, and I had to move away. So, yeah, I never really gave it much thought. How has this affected you emotionally over the years? In so many ways. Hiding within myself living and surviving through insecurities, using them to protect myself, thinking that if I don't look a certain way, I won't attract a certain type of attention. Okay. And I've been like that my whole life. Jennifer, let's move forward. When it was announced that Kenneth Petty was marrying Nicki Minaj, what was your first thought about that news? I was so afraid of being found out. I was so afraid of being known as the person he violated. And I didn't want that. You know, it's Nicki Minaj. You know, I didn't, 
I didn't want that to reflect on my children. Nikki addressed fans who brought up Kenneth's attempted rape conviction by replying to them on social media, saying he was 15, she was 16, in a relationship. What are your thoughts about that? It was like reliving it again, because it was a lie. Um, it wasn't true. We, we both were 16. We were never in a relationship. I just felt woman to woman that was wrong of her, because I don't know you and you don't know me to know that that statement you put out to the world to be true. You have 150 something million followers on you. They all believed it. It hurt coming from another woman. I mean, just the girl thing, you know? We reached out to Kenneth Petty's lawyer and representatives from Nicki Minaj who did not immediately respond to requests for comment. We're still here talking with Jennifer Huff, who is currently involved in a lawsuit with Nicki Minaj and her husband, Kenneth Petty. She is joined by her lawyer, Tyrone Blackburn. Now, Jennifer, in 2020, Kenneth Petty was arrested for failing to register as a sex offender. In violation of the plea deal he accepted for attempted rape in 1994. Now, did you feel that he wasn't taking responsibility he wasn't taking his punishment seriously. I didn't initially think that way. I think it was more about why wouldn't he want to protect the person who he's with? Mm. You know, more so like you've been registering for 20 something years. Why would you wait to now not to do so? I just, and, and then I thought more so that it was gonna open up a can of worms for me and my family. Well, we reached out to Kenneth Petty's lawyer and representatives for Nicki Minaj who did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Tyrone, will you please lay out just for us what is in the lawsuit? Let's just be clear. We would not be here but for the actions of Kenneth Petty and Nicki Minaj. Uh, the lawsuit uh, deals with two things. First, it deals with the crime of 1994 when Kenneth Petty raped Jennifer. Uh, and it also deals with the actions of 2020 when Nicki Minaj and Kenneth Petty decided to send their associates to Jennifer and harass her for a seven month span to get her to recant her story um, from 1994 in order to get him off of the sex offender registry. So the lawsuit deals with harassment, um, intentional infliction of emotional distress, uh, sexual harassment, sexual assault. Jennifer, what kind of harassment do you allege that you faced? There was um, an associate um, of Kenneth and Nikki Minaj who came to the state that I was living at. I've been harassed by people calling family members that I haven't even spoken to or seen in quite a while, offering money, um, phone calls from different people in regards to this supposed letter that I written. People approaching my daughter. People would approached her in a club and asked her about Kenneth Petty and she wasn't even born at the time that this happened. So yeah, it's been, it's been pretty awful. Jennifer, have you ever spoken to Nikki directly? I did, in March of 2020. She called me and she said that she got word that I was willing to help them out in a situation. I, I didn't understand what she was referring to. Um, she offered to fly me and my family to LA. She, um, I turned it down and I told her, woman to woman, this really happened and I hadn't spoken to her since. Now you allege that Nikki and Kenneth were harassing you, in what way? With them sending people to negotiate numbers as far as money is concerned with family members. And Nikki is the one who personally reached out to me. She's, you know, in regards to helping her helping them in this situation. And then the threats that I received because I kept 
saying no to every offer, to every suggestion. The last um, incident was when um, one of their associates put $20,000 on my lap and I still kept saying no. The last message I received was that I should have taken the money because they're going to use that money to put on my head. And then I just, I just cut off everything, changed my numbers. I moved multiple times, um, relocated from away from my children because I didn't want anything to come back and affect them. So I've just I've kind of been in fear for the last year. This associate that she's referring to, this is the same guy who recently posted an Instagram video threatening to, uh, to, to either kill or to do bodily harm to Jennifer. And this post came literally six days after Kenneth Petty accepted a plea deal here in California uh, for failing to register as a sex offender. This is the same guy that showed up at Jennifer's house with the $20,000 and put it on her lap with a pre-written recantment statement that he tried to force her to sign on behalf of uh, Nicki Minaj and Kenneth Petty. This is the same associate that, um, that sent Jennifer a text message from Kenneth Petty with Nicki Minaj's phone number informing her that this is the number that you will receive a call from. And that number is the one that called her. What are you guys wanting to come from this lawsuit? To let them know that they were wrong and you can't do this to people. You shouldn't do this to people. He did something a, a long time ago and, and he had consequences that he was supposed to stick with. What they did to me and my family wasn't okay. It wasn't right and it doesn't matter how much money you have, it doesn't matter what your status is. You can't intimidate people to make things go better for you and, and that's what they did. And I want my daughters to know that as they grow, as they experience life, as they come in contact with friends, family, strangers, or whatever, that, 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 they'll be, that they'll have the strength to know that they have a voice and, and they should use it. And don't ever let anybody try to silence them. What do you want to say to people who don't believe you? They have the right to their opinions. They have the right to their thoughts but you don't get to attack people because you don't believe. And you don't get to paint a picture of, of you know, this narrative that they put out of, you know, I'm a white girl who falsely accused a black boy. You don't get to do that. It doesn't matter what race you are, every, you know, you should be able to speak up and, and not have people intimidate you. Jennifer, we believe that every woman has the right to be heard. So thank you for being here today and sharing your story. Thank you, Tyrone, for being here as well, and best of luck.